everybody, it's Karen. Thank you for joining me. I've got this new to me card fold. It's called the Bay Window Card Fold. And there are lots of examples of it on Pinterest, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to give it a try. Uh, so I started this one. It's easy to do. Uh, I started with two pieces of cardstock that are five inches by seven inches. And I used uh, 110 pound cardstock. I'm creasing one of these pieces at a half an inch, two and a half inches, four and a half inches, and six and a half inches. And that will give you the front bay window part. So when it gets creased and folded, it will make that shape. But you don't want to fold it yet. Uh, I added onto it this Rainbow Poppies piece of cardstock. I trimmed it down to four and three quarter inches and then the three panels I cut one and three quarter inches wide and that small one is three eighths of an inch wide and they're all four and three or sorry four and three quarter inches tall and then I just glued those on before I cut out the window that just seemed the easiest way to me I know you end up with a little bit of you know wasted cardstock but it just seemed easiest to position them this way so I'm using that rectangle die. That one is from um, the Paper Rose collection of stitched rectangles. It ends up being four and three quarter inches wide by three and a quarter inches tall. So just whatever you have in your stash that would make that window. And it does not have to be a rectangle. It could be a circle. It could be, you know, whatever shape you've got. But you can see there I did two valley folds at the ends and two mountain folds in the middle. And that will give you that shape. Now, you need to have a stopper. This is basically like an easel card, kind of on the side. Uh, and so I chose this Rainbow Poppies piece of cardstock because I love that, <laughs> that border. So I just fussy cut that out and then my flap will stick under that. But in order for it to stick under, I have to build up that right side edge. So I chose to use foam tape for that. You could do paper or cardstock um, and just build it up with layers. But I chose to just stick some foam tape down and you can see I'm not going right up to the top edge because that flap will have to stick under there. And in the end I went back and put a narrower piece of foam tape. This was a wider one. Now on the inside of that window I chose this piece of Butterfly Bliss cardstock and I trimmed that down to be five inches tall. The width was okay because it gets covered up by that border piece. Uh, so I just left it the way it was and glued that in place onto my second piece of five by seven inch cardstock, which is the back. Now I've actually already uh, done the back. I've mounted onto some blue cardstock, that white panel and stamped and clear heat embossed the happy birthday uh, sentiment. So that back is all done. And now I can glue down that left hand edge and it's just that tiny little, um, half inch strip that gets glued down. So once that's in place then you can uh, put this border down and I I took the backing paper off the foam but I still put glue on because <laughs> I don't know foam and I don't go that well together sometimes and I just was afraid I would not get it lined up quite right so the glue gives me a little bit of extra wiggle room to sort of get it lined up the right way and then once it's in place it's just a great place for that little tab to stick under so you can see how that goes now I also chose to put on the inside this poppy field border die um, I, I just cut the poppies down I just wanted a bit more for the butterflies to be landing on so I've used Copic markers. I will have everything listed down below and I will list which Copic markers I use just in case you want to know that. Um, but I just quickly colored these in. I didn't do anything too fancy. Uh, and it just gives a bit more color in that background. So I'm gluing those in, uh, lining it up with the bottom. And you just want to be sure if you put this in that you, you know, glue those flowers down so they don't interfere with the, the flap mechanism. And then I just checked again to make sure that the flap would fit under and it does. So, so that's the, the background ready. Now to make the butterflies, I am using alcohol inks. I've got cranberry, gumball, lemonade, limeade, and that is denim. And I am doing this in a laminating folder. 
um, those butterflies because the flap opens the back side will be exposed and then I find the alcohol ink can be rubbed off so if I do these in a laminating folder both sides are covered so I've cut my laminating folder in half lengthwise just put the alcohol ink in, let it dry. I've got that little strip of cardstock there. My laminator is preheated to the five milliliter setting. And I run these through twice, just because I'm impatient. <laughs> and so often that ink hasn't completely dried. So I put it through with the parchment carrier first, um, just in case the ink squirts out. And then I run it through on its own uh, because I find the first time through it doesn't seal completely with the, all the shims and everything else. But the second time it's perfect and you can use either side of it then. Now I ended up not using this butterfly uh, card creator die. Uh, I used just the small little etched butterflies for this. And I just uh, picked where I wanted to cut them out from on that um, acetate. Uh, tape them down and cut out quite a few of them. Now if you find that you can't cut through acetate, I stick a little piece of copy paper over it, over the back side, the cutting, the side that's going to cut, and then they they pop out really quite easily after that. So I just find that's the easiest way to get them out. Sometimes if you don't, I, I know it's t tricky to get those out, but they work quite well. Now, they go in exactly like um, you would do a pop-up box. So I've got little strips of acetate. They're probably about a quarter of an inch wide. I've got some double-sided adhesive on one end, and I am sticking that near the, near the body of that butterfly. Um, and now I figure out where I want him to go on my card, and I'm holding that acetate in place, and then I can trim it off where I think I want it to go and then put another piece of double-sided adhesive on that so I can stick it to the inside. Now you'll see I end up not using this butterfly. I just felt like he was too big compared to all the other ones so I have him saved for another card. So then you just stick them down like that. Okay so here I've got all those little butterflies uh, mounted on on acetate strips and I've just used some Scotch wall safe tape to hold them in place. I've glued a few of them down to the back and now I can go along, once I've got the placement where I want them to go, I can now add the double sided tape to the bottom of those acetate strips. I think that you could do so many cards with this style. Like you could even make that a bay window, you know, and have a, you know, cat or dog looking out or I don't know, like a farm scene or a forest scene, all kinds of things. It could be Christmas. So that is the card now. I have glued all of those uh, butterflies down. Uh, and it opens up like this. So it goes very flat in the envelope like that. Uh, and I think I would put a note inside suggesting people tuck that flap under the right border. Just because most people may not realize that's what you do with it. But anyway, I thought that was kind of a fun fold. I hope that's given you a little inspiration, everybody. Thank you very much for joining me, and I hope you'll come back for the next video. Thanks so much, and have a great day.